I'm going to explain you a strategy, the strategy that I use with my clients and you'll see it's probably the strategy that most uh, relationship coaches would use. It's a strategy that I actually use with my kids. Here is a preview of what we've done on the cover. It's called positive reinforcement. I'm going to explain you how it could work in your situation, how efficient is it, some proof that it works and also the which is I think even more important is the effect it would have on you and on your well-being and how you can sort of feel better after this breakup because I know it is very hard I know it's painful positive reinforcement will actually help you deal with this breakup in the best way possible I'll explain everything after the jingle I get my xback.com everyone deserves a second chance so positive reinforcement, positive interaction. You basically almost could do a reward chart for your, <laughs> for your ex. This one is for my kids, for example, when they behave, you see on Monday, the dinner pyjama and stuff like that. The, I'm using this because when, <laughs> when I made this video, I thought like, yeah, but we're using a reward chart with our kids. It's really about rewarding good behavior. Um, and in a way, you can consider your ex as a kid. Just for the sake of this video, let's do it this way. <laughs> because unless you mention that something doesn't work, unless you teach them what you want, what you don't want, they will continue behaving in the same way, right? If you're watching this video, you're probably still single and you're still trying to get back with your ex. So some things need to change. Right? And these things you can teach your ex, right? And it's really about how we can bring more positivity in the relationship recovery. So you reward good behavior and you punish bad behaviors. And you teach, that's what we do with kids, you teach that each action will have a consequences, a consequence or different consequences depending. You treat me badly, I pull back. You disrespect me, I stop investing. But it's very important for them to understand that if they do this, I'm going to do that. And this will lead to better dynamic because very often post breakup are quite toxic. Right? And the, the only way to break those toxic cycles is to really be transparent about like, if you treat me like this, if you say those kind of things, I'm going to do this thing. And I'm not going to yell, I'm not going to be mad at you. It's a proactive way to deal with conflict. The same way you say with your kids, if you don't brush your teeth, we won't have story time. And it's clear, if they don't do it, there's a clear consequence. And the same way as when you do with kids, you have to follow through. And I know it's very hard because sometimes we have this narrative like, no, 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 but he just texted me after one week. And, you know, even though it's very distant and he's saying things or she's saying things that I'm not okay with. There's so much at stake and I need to reply to that message. So it's really about reversing the dynamic and create this thing where your ex have to fight to get you. Okay, so now quick question. If you're not sure whether you can get back with your ex, because sometimes, um, I don't know stats, but the people watching this video are wasting their time, some of them. Um, and they're wasting time, they're consuming a lot of content, they're um, putting their life on hold, uh, and they don't realize that actually their relationship can't be saved. So in order to get more clarity on this, I put together a quiz for you to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex. If you have a score above 15, then it makes sense to continue watching this video. If your score is below 15, do something else with your life. Life is too short. The quiz is totally free and the link is in the description. How to break no contact. Oh, you didn't see it coming. How to break no contact is very important. Uh, here in this video, it's really packed with almost the best <laughs> tips you can get um, if you want to get back with your ex. Breaking no contact, you don't use social media. You just send a, um, a text uh, or WhatsApp, whatever messaging service you use. Could be, I hope you're all right. Another alternative is um, you're always great at what would you recommend me to do? You're always great at cooking pasta. What would you recommend to do? Because I have my parents over. Um, 
or what's the place we've been to? Uh, you know, or what was the, remind me the, the place we've been, or um, a, a colleague of mine is traveling to, I'm taking a real example from a client, a colleague, I'm going to New York, um, you know, you've lived in New York, uh, I'm going with New York with my daughter, you've lived in New York or you have friends in New York, where would you recommend me to, to do, can you help me uh, sort of sort out a plan uh, so she can have a great time with me? Don't make it up, don't create a fake story. Uh, I, I guess the idea of post breakup is how you can um, keep yourself busy and have an active life and focus on yourself. So I hope you have many things in your life right now. If you don't really try to find ways to keep yourself busy and active and, and enjoying life as much as you, as you can. Um, and it's something that, you know, that happens in your life, something you, where you need a bit of their help. And I call it the advisor approach, where you ask them for something. It doesn't, in a way, it puts them a little bit in terms of superiority. But what we want to create is that the, the sense that they can help you, right? Um, they, they see that um, it's useful, it's important. Also, when you have conversation about, you know, cooking pasta <laughs> or your, their, um, their mother's meal or stuff like that, uh, secret recipe or the grandma's recipe. It's not about the relationship. There's no tension. There's no, it's really in the here and now. It's very playful. You know, and that's the thing we want to achieve when we break no contact. Keep all the relationship stuff behind, aside. We'll treat them afterwards. But here, when you break no contact, it's really about this. Things to avoid. Hi. And that's it. Or oh, just a smiley. They will, they will feel like, what the? <laughs> We've been together 12 years and he's sending me this. No way, I'm getting him back. Another one is, I've been to see Top Gun. It was a great movie, did you see it? They'll be like, I, I don't care about what, what you're doing in your life, you know? In that case, you're not, it sounds like the recipe thing, but because you don't ask them for advice, it's just like I'm showing up, like I've been to this party and stuff like that. So it's very different, right? The dynamic is very different. Now, when you send, let's go back. When you send that message, obviously it's a big leap of faith. I would recommend to send to to send a message or to break no contact at least at least after four weeks of no contact. The reason I say four weeks is because usually habits are formed after twenty. 21, 28 days, it depends on the theory of the studies. But I find that three weeks is quite short, depending, depending on the length of the relationship, depending on what you, the tension and things like that, depending if they are also dating someone, if they're in a rebound. But usually wait at least four weeks. I have people calling me and they tell me, like, I've been in the contact for six months. And I ask them like, why? Because I've heard like, you know, you have to go no contact and you have to wait for your ex to contact you. And uh, if they don't contact you, then, uh, then what? Well, um, I'm calling you because I want my ex back. Okay, but what have you done? Well, I've done no contact. But how do you know if it could work? Well, I'm waiting for my ex to contact me. And those people, they could wait six, you know, and you probably in that case. And fair enough, I understand the logic of people telling you and there's a lot of content about that, but it's more about, you know, forget your ex, move on, you're better than that, which I think is kind of helpful to hear for you because you are more than just this breakup. And, I, and, and the breakup, I understand, really affects our, our self-esteem, our confidence, uh, we feel rejected, and it's awful. But at the end of the day, if you know that this person is important in your life, and the only thing that is preventing you guys from being together is one text, What's the risk of sending that king text? <laughs> okay. After a month, two, three, four, things want dramatic change. You want, and I've seen that you won't come across as weak, right? As needy. You're not needy if you've waited six, uh, four to six weeks, for example. You're not needy <laughs> by definition. You you had your life for for this amount of time. Okay, so just wanted to have this, this part on, on, on no contact, be mindful. And so, yeah, what's the risk? You send that message and they don't reply. 
negative outcome. They don't reply, they treat you with silence. So they reply, he or she replies with anger. What it tells you? That breakup was probably something good for you. You know, I'd rather have you hear a bad news now than waiting six months, put your life on hold, uh, not being able to date people because you still have your ex in mind and you entertaining hopes and ideas of you together when it's actually dead, right? So confront yourself with the reality and I understand it's hard, I understand you don't want to, you'd rather uh, be in the unknown than facing this reality, but at the end of the day, if it's been six, eight, nine months that you're still waiting for your ex and you have no news, don't waste your time, right? Don't waste your time because if they reply that, it means you deserve more. You don't want someone who doesn't want you, right? A relationship by definition. Your ideal partner, because people tell me, yeah, but she or, she or he's the one. The definition of someone who's the one is someone who wants you. It's someone who desires, desires you, right? For many reasons, things didn't work. For many reasons, they've changed their mind. Um, they're in love with someone else. You have to accept that. If you want to be happy in a relationship, it can't be with someone who doesn't want you. That's the number one thing, okay? The negative outcome, so I don't know why, but most of the people who call me, or my clients, they don't get those negative outcomes. Because I think, well, first, <laughs> when I, before I get any clients, I make sure that they have a chance to get back with their ex. So either they take the quiz, or we do the assessment together, or we really have a look at their situation. But I rarely have negative outcome. Rarely have negative outcomes because, um, because I think you know it, right? You know whether there's actually a chance for you to get back with your ex and you know that things could have been different and it's just a question of solving this. Positive outcome, friendly response. They ask similar question. You see that it's sort of natural. Um, it is, then therefore it deserves them you. You deserve that you can follow up and invest in the recovery. It's a green light. Is it the end of the process? No, it's only the beginning. Because that's it. That's it. What I mean, I said, don't think it's a victory. Actually, this title is very, really, it's very misleading. It's that's it about what you should be doing, right? It's a first step of a long journey. Let things settle a bit. You just want to show yourself a little bit, be in their horizon. What I always recommend is to let the other lead the way, so you're sure that you're not, uh, you're guaranteed that you're not forcing things and you go at their own pace. By breaking the contact, your ex can now wonder a bit about what you're up to, about your relationship together. As I said, always better to take it slowly versus forcing. And I know it's frustrating because <laughs> you made your decision, you want to get back with them. In that thinking process, they're a bit behind. So let them come to you slowly but surely. Um, recovery is like gardening. You know, if you water a plant, you can't really force things. You have to respect a certain rhythm. And it's the same in relationship recovery. What we are looking for what I assess with my clients is the progress. The same way when you water a plant, you can assess whether it needs more water, needs to be in the sun, I need to, I don't know, I'm not a gardening expert actually. But you can assess, and as long as the plant, the plant grows, you're fine with that. But you have to accept that you can't really get that plant to grow faster than it could. Feel free to get in touch if you find it too difficult, too confusing, if you have so many questions in your head, so many confusion uh, in your, you know, in your headspace, and you want to get in touch, or you just want to have a chat with me. There's a link to book a free discovery call, and together we'll discuss how I can help you, the type of coaching that I do, and my method. And if you have any any other questions on your situation, I'll be more than happy to answer those. And last but not least, if you like this video and if you like my content, don't hesitate to click on the like button. It does help me a lot. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I get my ex Everyone deserves a second chance.